everyone, in this lecture, we're gonna be talking about rare events and p-values. Now, p-values are going to be a very important concept for you to wrap your mind around because it's used in almost every statistical test. Now, let's first talk about rare events. Let's say Apple comes out with a claim that the average age, average age is 45. And you're like, mm, I don't necessarily think that's true. I don't think the average age of an Apple user is 45. So you gather a sample of a bunch of people. Let's say in this case, you gather a sample of size 100. And you notice that the average age is different. For example, you notice the average age of this. I shouldn't use that. I should use this symbol because that's sample average, which is different than the population average uh, symbol. Let's say you calculate the average age was like 43. Now, does this mean that Apple is wrong? Well, not necessarily. I mean, the thing is, you're never going to get an average age of exactly 45. That is incredibly unlikely. Chances are you're going to get a number that's close to 45. Now, keep in mind that 45 represents the average of the population, but that the population is not necessarily all uh, aged 45. It just means that you have this sort of normal distribution of ages around 45. And so the idea is that, um, yeah, getting an average age of 43 here is not that big of a deal. Every once in a while, that'll happen. Now, a rare event is when this number is so extremely different than 45 that something has to be wrong. Let's say you get an average age of like 22, and you're like, whoa, that is very, very rare, <laughs> right? That's, this is called a rare event. And the idea is you're making the assumption that the average age is 45. Let's assume that Apple is correct. Then how often would you get a sample average of 22 with 100 people? That's incredibly unlikely, but it is possible. It does happen. It's just incredibly unlikely. The idea is you have two options at this point. Either you suggest that your sample is just a crazy anomaly, or you suggest that this assumption was false. And typically, when you have a rare event, you assume that the assumption is false, not necessarily that your sample is false. And here's why. We don't have data about this. We don't. We have data about this. Here is our data right there. And so it's more common for people to assume that something went wrong with this claim rather than this claim. And that is called a rare event. Now, how rare is this? And that's where the p-value comes in. The p-value will tell you how rare this event is. Whenever you conduct a test, you'll get a p-value. Let's say in this case, we get a p-value of 0.02. What that means is that this is so rare that if this, in fact, this claim right here, if that was in fact true, then 2% of the time you should see a, an event that rare. And so this kind of tells you, this is like a measure of how rare it is. The smaller the p-value, the more rare the event is. The higher the p-value, the more common it would be if this would be true. And so the idea is that if you have a p-value that is small, then you should probably reject the null hypothesis. You should say, no, it's, the average age isn't 45. It's actually probably 22, to be honest. Um, now, if the p-value was really high, let's say it was like 99.99, this means that 99% of the time, you should expect results like this. Well, if your p-value is like 99%, then that's pretty common. It's not a rare event, meaning that there's probably nothing wrong with this claim here. That's probably, it's not necessarily correct, but you probably shouldn't reject it. Your statistical test really didn't show anything wrong with your assumption here. Now, typically, a p-value of 0 0.05 or lower is too rare for the scientific community to just um, still accept this. The idea is if you have a p-value of 0.05 or lower, then you should probably reject this. 
And I mean, physics even has a lower p-value threshold. I think it's like 0. 0.0000 and so on, like three or something. It's really, really small. Meaning that if you come up with a test that has a p-value of that small or lower, it's so rare that you just straight up have to claim that Apple's uh, um, average here is wrong or whatever the physics hypothesis is. Anyways, thank you guys so much. And I'll see you guys in the next section.